Hello everybody, a big welcome to my April and May recent reads. So the reason I'm condensing these two reading months together is not because I didn't read much in these months, it is simply because I didn't get round to filming my May recent reads and it is now June. We have a lot of books to talk about today people. We have a lot of brand new books, we have some literary fiction, some poetry, some historical fiction, some middle grade, some non-fiction. I kind of went rogue. <laughs> I also reread a favourite book. A lot of good reading has been done so let's just dive in. The first book that I picked up in April was Still Life by Sarah Winman. This is one of my most anticipated releases of the year, right up there with the new Sally Rooney. For those of you who don't yet know, Sarah Winman is one of my favourite authors of all time. I absolutely adore her as a woman as well as a writer. This book has just come out at the beginning of June. I was super lucky to get sent this proof copy ahead of publication. I read it as soon soon as I received it. And guys, it was just sublime. Opening in 1944 in Tuscany, this novel tells the story of two strangers who meet. Ulysses, a young British soldier, and Evelyn, an older female historian. The novel then follows these two characters' stories, as well as the stories of the people around them over the next four decades in both London and Italy. I don't really know how to articulate this book. It's just characters and life and beauty, and pain, and tenderness, and humour. Sarah Winman just does human feeling so well. The big moments, the little moments, all of them are given the weight and significance that they deserve. It feels so true to life. Honestly, if you've read her writing, you'll know what I mean. The prose itself is so stunning. There are so many passages in here that I just had to reread. She articulates things so perceptively. The cast of characters in here as well, so special. So many interesting characters and beautiful, complex relationships they are the kind of characters who will stick around in your mind for sure. Now I will say that I don't think this book was technically, structurally quite as good as it could have been. As much as I hate to say it, I do think that this book perhaps fell into the trap of being slightly under-edited which is something that is so frustratingly common when you have an author as brilliant as this. This book without a doubt could have been shorter and just as brilliant. In fact, probably more perfect, but whatever, apart from that little niggle, this book was absolutely beautiful, just sublime. Her writing is total sunshine. I couldn't give this anything less than five stars. Next up, I reread one of my favourite books of all time, Howard's End by E. M. Forster. This is an early 20th century classic set around the year 1910, following primarily the two progressive, privileged, idealistic Schlegel sisters, Margaret and Helen. Their lives become entwined with two families, the rich business-owning Wilcoxes and the poorer, downtrodden Basts. This was my second time reading this novel. 
and I am super happy and grateful and relieved to say that this stands up as being one of my favourite ever books. I actually read this one with my husband Cameron and we then watched the 2018 BBC adaptation afterwards. Such a joy. I'm not actually going to talk about this one too much here because God knows I've ranted about it enough on my channel. But please just know that it is gorgeous. The way E.M. Forster explores class and gender and privilege at this time and manages to balance this criticism with a charming, humorous, richly charactered, engaging story. This book is just everything. Stunning novel, so well crafted, I can't recommend it more highly. Obviously this got five stars. Next up in April I read The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. This novel follows a young, poor, single mother named Helen who meets the rich, childless Eve on the train. The women get chatting about their situations and ultimately agree to murder each other's husbands. The story takes off from there. So I picked this one up because it was on the Women's Prize long list and honestly it was kind of a letdown for me. I've already forgotten a lot about what happened in here. So I did really like the way this one started. I really liked the premise. It definitely intrigued me. I really enjoyed the initial setting and meeting these two very different women on the train. But unfortunately, this novel just didn't really live up for me. It kind of did everything that I thought it would, but not particularly well. The characters weren't so interesting to me, especially the main character. I just felt like she gave me nothing to grab onto. The whole thing felt disappointingly and unwisely slow-paced generally throughout. It definitely could have benefited from some tightening. Parts of this book were enjoyable, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed some of the commentary on domestic violence and class that occurred in here. I just kind of wished that they had been taken a bit further. I did enjoy the main plot twist reveal that occurs in the book. It did take me by surprise. When I read that I was a little bit like, fair enough. But overall this novel was nothing special, I didn't think. It just it could have done so much more with these ideas and themes. So in the end I gave this one three stars. Next up I read The Attitudes by Katie Griffiths. This is a new debut poetry collection by one of my favourite poetry publishers ever, Nine Arches Press. Katie Griffiths explores a whole host of themes in this collection surrounding mortality and the body and the mind and just what it is to be alive. So the poetry in this collection is quite playful, which I really enjoyed. There's some really beautiful imagery in here, some really interesting use of rhyme and structure. My favourite poems in here were definitely the ones with the haunting natural imagery, especially the ones exploring ageing and intellect. Unfortunately, I didn't quite connect to this collection as a whole in the way that I have with other ones, but that's really just personal taste. I also didn't quite get a distinct enough impression of the collection as a whole, which is something that I typically tend to enjoy. These poems didn't necessarily really work together for me. So overall, not my personal favourite poetry collection, but I do think there were some really beautiful moments in here, and Katie Griffiths clearly has a lot of potential. So in the end, I gave this one three stars. Next up, I picked up Lust 
Sister by Raven Leilani. This is a massively popular literary novel right now. It was on the Women's Prize long list. This is described as a darkly comic novel set in New Jersey, following the story of a young black woman who is essentially trying to figure out her shit, her sexual relationships and her career. This book is really good. It's really good. It's totally what you'd expect it to be. Fresh writing, witty dialogue, dry humour, interesting, complex, slightly dislikable, painfully relatable millennial woman, very much set in the present day, exploring sexual relationships and multifaceted self-identities and career prospects. It feels totally authentic, I totally bought this whole thing, and I really whizzed through it as well. It definitely had me keeping wanting to read. I will say that this book didn't completely blow me away, like I know it has some people, and like I kind of wanted it to, let's be honest. I'm also not totally convinced that this one will stick around in my mind for too long, but it was genuinely really good. I can totally see why it's getting so much attention at the moment totally worth a read. So in the end, I gave this one 4.5 stars. Next up, I read Slug by Holly McNish. This is a kind of hybrid book comprised of poetry and short stories and short essays, all exploring Holly McNish's personal experiences with grief and family and sex and self-love and parenthood. I had never read any of Holly McNish's poetry before reading this book. I had really wanted to, I'd heard nothing but great things about her, and I am so pleased to say that this book was everything that I wanted it to be. As I said in my anticipated releases video, I was mainly here for the poetry, but I ended up loving everything about this. While the poetry was my favourite aspect of this, the poetry being amazing, all of the different mediums just brought so much, making for such a rich and unique reading experience. I loved how personal this book was, and how informative, how beautiful it was, and how shocking it was, and how humorous, and just ultimately how creative and multifaceted it was. This is so good, such a unique special book, I couldn't put it down. I think tons of people will really really enjoy this book, whether you tend to read poetry or not, whether you tend to like non-fiction or not, just give it a go. In the end, I had to give this one five stars. Next up, I read The Unadoptables by Hannah Took. This is an upper middle grade historical novel set in the late 1800s in Amsterdam, following five orphans who decide to flee their terrible orphanage and essentially go on an adventure. When I picked this one up, I was super in the mood for a children's adventure. I wanted the historical setting, I wanted the fun and endearing cast of characters and the childhood friendships, and in many ways this book did provide all of those things. I really enjoyed the settings in here, both in terms of Amsterdam at this time, but also the more specific creepy settings of the orphanage and the windmill. I definitely got a series of unfortunate events vibes when I started this book, which I was living for, and I also really liked the five central characters here. I loved learning about their distinct personalities and seeing their interactions with one another very sweet. The thing that did let this book down for me slightly was the plot. It started off pretty strong, but it just weakened for me as things went on. It didn't feel as self-assured or focused 
script. It should definitely have been edited down and tightened up in places. It didn't have the punchy reveals that I wanted it to and ultimately it just didn't feel entirely confident to me. This was a shame because there was a lot that I really liked about this book and I would still recommend this one if it sounds like something you're interested in. It just didn't really blow me away in the end. So ultimately I gave The Unadoptables three out of five stars. Next up I read Boy in Various Poses by Lewis Buxton. This is another debut poetry collection by Nine Arches Press. This one exploring all of the different types of boy you can be. It looks at transgressing boundaries and bodies and sexuality and vulnerability and mental health. I was really excited as soon as I heard about this one. It is totally my kind of poetry and I'm really pleased to say that I really enjoyed this one. These poems are personal and tender and touching as well as being a bit more wide-reaching and scathing. As you read this collection you just experience so many different sides to these poems as there are to people. The blurb highlights the tender and the awful and the thoughtful and the vulnerable and I really experienced all of these things while I read. Some of my personal favourite poems from this collection were the super visceral ones, the ones that focused on bodies, some of them were really sexual, some of them were completely not. If you're interested in gender and social expectations and pressures and conformity and non-conformity, even if you don't tend to read poetry, pick this one up. It's accessible and illuminating. It's really good. So in the end, I gave this one four stars. Next up, I picked up A Little History of Poetry by John Carey. This is a non-fiction book that does what it says on the tin. The book explores famous poetry and poets throughout the ages in chronological order from like 700 BC to now. So in many ways this book was exactly what I thought it was going to be and that's not a bad thing. I love reading poetry, as you probably know. I love to read poetry from the 20th and 21st century in particular, but it was really great for me to learn more about poetry generally as a whole, to put some kind of context to these poets and poems that I may have heard of before but never really known much about. Obviously there were chapters in here that I enjoyed much more than others. Personally I enjoyed the chapters on modern poets and on Victorian women poets and on Russian poets much more than I enjoyed the chapters on World War One poetry for example. But you know what? that's just what you get. Also I'm not entirely convinced that I read this book in the best way. I read it cover to cover in order the way that you would read any other book and while I did like experiencing the chronological order of things I do think that this led to the reading experience feeling a little dry sometimes, so I would bear that in mind if you're thinking of picking this one up. But overall it was really good, I learnt a lot and I enjoyed myself. It definitely did what it set out to do. I'm really pleased I own this one now, I think I will dip in and out of it in the future for sure. I also think there are other books in this series that I'm really interested in getting my hands on now. I believe there is a little history of literature and also a little history of philosophy. So anyway, in the end I gave this one 3.5 stars. Only like 
five bucks left to go. <laughs> Fucking hell. Next up is Absorbed by Kylie Whitehead. This is an exciting new release from the new imprint, New Ruins Press, which is the baby of two indie publishers, Dead Ink Books and Influx Press. I mentioned this book in my recent anticipated releases video. It follows the story of a woman named Alison who when she feels her partner slipping away from her, literally absorbs him. The aim of this new imprint, I believe, is to explore and push the boundaries between literary and genre fiction, which immediately excited me. And yes, this book was so weird <laughs> in all of the ways I expected and hoped it would be. The strengths of this book for me were definitely the concept and the writing. The idea of literally absorbing the people you love is so genius and it was so interesting to see it illustrated in this kind of body horror, gruesome, all-consuming way so fresh. The writing and dialogue in here has that really simple, dry, millennial feel to it that is so popular right now, but it's also really dark and comic. I didn't really find the characters in and of themselves to be too interesting. The main character in particular didn't really stand out to me. I didn't really feel a connection with her. But then again, I'm not sure this was the point of the book. She is much more about what she represents and she really managed to represent female insecurity and being kind of dislikable but really relatable at the same time. This is such an interesting book. I would definitely recommend it if you're interested. And just this new imprint as a whole is really, really exciting. Keep your eyes peeled. So in the end, I gave this one four stars. Next up, I read The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. This is a new historical novel set in ancient Pompeii, following the story of a young woman named Amara, who is enslaved in a brothel. This was another book that I mentioned in my recent anticipated releases video, but unfortunately this one was a little bit more of a letdown for me. I was really excited while going into this one to read something totally different to what I normally read. A totally different time setting, a totally different location, more plot driven and more high stakes. And I really did enjoy all of those aspects of this novel and just being in this world. I also really enjoyed the characters at the beginning of this novel. Amara has four friends who she lives with in the brothel and it was super interesting to learn all about their distinct personalities and their different pasts. I was really excited to see where this book went, but unfortunately it just didn't really keep up the momentum for me. I didn't really remain engaged with the characters, they fell a little bit flat. The plot was a bit lacklustre, a little bit disappointing, and the writing also generally wasn't anything special. So this was a bit of a meh one for me, which was a shame. I really wanted to like it and have a really fun reading experience with it. You can't win them all, I guess. So in the end, I gave this one 2.5 stars. Next up, I read Common Ground by Naomi Ishiguro. This is a coming of age friendship novel following two boys who meet on their local common when they are teenagers. Stan is having a hard time with his mother at home after his father's death. He's also struggling at his new school. Charlie is a little older. He is from the traveller community. He doesn't go to mainstream school and he decides to somewhat take Stan under his wing. Years later, as adults, the two boys meet again in London at a party and both of their situations have completely changed. So on the tin, this is like 
my perfect novel. I love books that are character focused and relationship focused, especially when these characters and relationships are explored over a prolonged period of time. I really enjoyed seeing the different home lives and different ways of living and different belief systems that this book presented, especially as it showed them changing over the years. The book also touches on some really interesting and important themes, including class, and prejudice and education. That all being said, I don't think the execution in this book was necessarily the best. I'm not convinced that I totally bought the central friendship from the start of this novel, which kind of provided rocky foundations for the rest of the book. I also felt that the book finally got properly into exploring some really interesting things too late, and then the book kind of ended. I liked a lot about this book, but I ultimately feel as though I enjoyed the ideas and the potential here, much more than I enjoyed the actual execution. This one was a little bit of a shame, so in the end I gave it three stars. Almost there now people, the penultimate book I read in May was What Fire by Alice Miller. This is a new poetry collection by Liverpool University Press, essentially exploring the climate crisis as catastrophe continues to crawl into our lives. This collection felt really dystopian and dark and eerie, and I absolutely loved those vibes. It felt really unique, and I really loved exploring this terrifying setting through poetry. It just adds some kind of extra dimension and surrealness, and power to the whole thing. There is also this kind of unpredictability to Alice Miller's poetry that really added to this feeling of chaos. And while I did enjoy this to a certain extent, and I can see that it's Alice Miller's style, and I can see that it's clever and how it can be effective, I do feel that it just kind of contributed to my feeling of being left behind by the poetry. For some reason, I just didn't really feel like I was getting these poems all of the time. I didn't really feel like I was getting what was trying to be said, or just getting anything else from it personally. I don't think this is the fault of Alice Miller. I actually think she's quite a brilliant poet because when I did connect with the poems, it was like, wow. But just for whatever reason, I didn't really connect with this poetry collection too much as a whole. So overall, this was really interesting and unique, and there were some really great moments in it for me but it just wasn't a personal favourite of mine. I would definitely recommend picking this one up if it sounds interesting to you and you think you could love it, and in the end I gave this one three stars. And the final book that I read recently was We Are Not In The World by Connor O'Callaghan. This novel takes place over a week-long road trip from England to France. A man is heartbroken after a painful love affair, and his off-the-rails 20-something daughter travels with him. So unfortunately, I don't really have much to say about this one, because this book just did nothing for me. I don't really know why, but I just did not care about any of this. <laughs> this was such a shame, and honestly a massive surprise. I actually discussed this book last year quite a bit as an anticipated release of mine. It sounds totally me, like focusing in on a short period of time, being character and relationship centred, interaction and dialogue heavy. I thought I was going to learn so much about these characters and their lives, I thought it was going to be really intimate and touching. It wasn't. I was so disengaged while I read this book. I was slightly interested in the daughter and what was going on with her, 
but the novel just kept jumping away from her. It was way more about this man and what was going on with him and the story just kept going to these places that were not interesting or really relevant or illuminating at all. There was also this weird relationship thing with his mother that I didn't really get. This was just a bad reading experience. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really get how anyone could get anything from reading this book, which is weird because Camilla Shamsi is advocating the book on the front cover. I don't know, this one just baffled me. I guess you can't get all books. So in the end, this one got 1.5 stars. So there we go. Those were all of the books that I read in April and May. Thank you so much if you managed to get through this whole video and you're still with me now. You are a saint. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope some books sparked your interest interest do let me know down below in the comments as always also let me know if you've been reading anything particularly good recently i love to hear thank you again for watching i hope you're all doing really well and i will see you soon in another one bye guys